to be back here in Guildhall in the city of London. Those of you who are here, those of you that will remember, we were here for the Joshua Dubois press conference. What a fight, what a night that turned out to be. And we're only a couple of weeks removed from an iconic night in Riyadh. Artur Betabiev became the undisputed world light heavyweight champion. This is just the kind of history being made by Riyadh season. That was a night, that was a fight that caused drama, that caused action, and that caused plenty of debate. And it also served as a bit of a reminder as to what Riyadh season is delivering. At the highest level of the sport, it's about the best versus the best. And that's what today is about. Today we formally launch another iconic event, December 21st, Usyk versus Fury 2. This is very much the best versus the best. Back in May, Alexander Usyk and Tyson Fury, they finally met. They met in a ring of fire to decide the first undisputed world heavyweight champion of the century. On December 21st, that ring of fire is reignited. Alexander Usyk gets the opportunity to rubber stamp his legacy, to do once again what he's already done. Tyson Fury gets the opportunity at redemption and also to become a three-time world heavyweight champion. And thankfully, all of us get the opportunity to just watch it unfold. December 21st. Have a look at this top table here as well. I mean, uh, it's what we expect from these Riyadh season events. It's just banger after banger. So many fantastic undercard fights. Fighters with points to prove, statements to make, and some fighters who may well be the future of this sport. I want to open up by uh, bringing in Hall of Fame boxing promoter Frank Warren. Uh, Frank, we'll speak about the main event in the part two, but uh, the undercard, you're sat next to what many are calling the future of the division. It's a, a brilliant undercard. Talk to us about it. Well, it is, as you say, it's a brilliant undercard, and we've got world WBO world youth champion in Moses, uh, who's done everything, and I mean everything that's been asked of him up to as yet. One of the most exciting young fighters I've ever been involved with. Still a teenager. And this is a big step up for him. A massive step up. You know, his last fight, he stopped walking two rounds. Um, and with Dempsey, he lost to Hergovic, I think it was the last fight, over 12 rounds. And we all see Hergovic in with, in his last loss, well, his first loss, I should say, against... Uh, Daniel Dubois, which was uh, for the interim world title. And you see how dangerous Ergovic was, but he went 12 rounds. He, we got to the 12th round with him. So this is a big step up for Moses, but we got confidence in him. We believe in him and we believe that he in time will be the future of heavyweight boxing. Thank you, Frank. Let's, uh, let's bring in Eddie Hearn. Uh, Eddie, this, again, the sort of undercard that we expect from these Riyadh season events. Plenty of interest from your side as well, with, of course, Peter McGrail taking on Dennis McCann and Johnny Fisher against Dave Allen. So much to talk about. Talk to us about it. Thanks, Dev. Yeah, I mean, I think that even if we had no fighters on this card, we'd be there because what we saw first time around was just one of the best fights I've ever seen live between Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk. Really blessed and thankful to be given opportunities for our fighters on this card. And when you look at the three matchroom guys on the card, I mean, not here today, for me, is one of the best fights in the 154 pound division. Israel Madrimov against Sergei Bokacic, two guys that could have got the nod in their last fight against Terence Crawford and Virgil Ortiz, jumped straight in with each other. It's an incredible matchup. Johnny Fisher, you know, you talk about Moses Atumu, that's a, an outstanding talent. For me, those two guys there are the future of the heavyweight division in this country. Johnny Fisher, the biggest ticket seller in the country outside of Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury right now. He's got a great fight against the ever popular Dave Allen. It's a really tough fight and a good step up. And for me, one of the best fights that can be made in British boxing, which is Peter McGraw against Dennis McCann. You know, the number one, number two super bantamweights in the country, both world-class fighters fighting for the British and European titles. And I think this is exactly what we need to see in the sport. The opportunity that I think both guys on this platform have to take. And we're the benefactors of that, seeing these great matchups. And I just want to say as well, I want to make sure that everybody and every fight fan tries to get themselves to Riyadh on December 21st. 
You know, we were there a couple of weeks ago for Bivo against Betterbiev. This place is incredible. I actually went last weekend to watch the tennis, to see the opening of the Snooker Academy there. The 167 Snooker Masters is on the same week as Fury Usyk. When people talk about the lack of, um, of you know, the atmosphere in Riyadh, if you would have seen the tennis last week, if you would have seen the snooker, if you would have seen Fury Usyk, the atmosphere is brilliant. And last time for Fury Usyk, the weigh-in, the press conference, the fight was electric. So we're all going to be working hard with Queensbury and Gold Star to make sure that it's accessible for UK fight fans. Johnny Fisher is going to be bringing out a huge army just on his own. But honestly, you have to come and experience this place. It's incredible. There's so much happening there. And let's create a night to remember for what is, I think, the biggest night of boxing in 2024 on December 21st. Thank you very much, Eddie. Let's, uh, let's start speaking to the fighters. Lee McGregor against Isaac Lowe in the featherweight division. This is a fight that has been bubbling away. It's been on, it's been off, but now it's very much on. And I'd like to start with Lee McGregor here. And Lee, I heard you talk about this is uh, the sort of night that you live for. This is everything, right? Huge stage, chance to finally put this rivalry with Isaac Lowe to bed. Yeah, no, for sure, Dev. Um, as you say, it's been bubbling for a long time. Uh, we were due to fight in December last year. Unfortunately, Al got injured. Uh, we rescheduled the date for early this year. For whatever reason, the fight never happened. Um, fortunately for the both of us, it's landed on this huge event, uh, one of the biggest events that the world is going to see. So I'm just absolutely buzzing and um, ready to make a statement. I watched your uh, kind of digital face-off with Isaac Lowe from last year when this fight was first scheduled. It all seemed pretty friendly, pretty amicable. Uh, and then I checked Twitter, and more recently there's things about Isaac Lowe saying he's going to put you to sleep and retire you. What's happened? What's gone wrong, Lee? I don't know. Honestly, this is what I mean. You don't know what you're getting with Isaac. So um, we'll see December the 21st um, the talking stops we, we get, it's just me and him in the ring there's no there's no entourage there's no Tyson there's no nobody it's just me and Isaac and the best man will win and I firmly believe that'll be me well let's bring in the Westgate warrior Isaac Lowe um, how do we do Bebel? <laughs> we're doing well I'm doing well I think the people are doing well and we'll be doing very well when we see you on December 21st against Lee McGregor it's a fight that you have wanted for some time. Tell us your thoughts heading into it. Yeah, like Lisa uh, just said there, it's been coming off for 12 months now and we're finally going to settle the dust on the December the 21st. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's a fight what we picked. We got a few names got mentioned to Spencer and, and we picked them. We wanted Lee. We wanted Lee from, obviously, from last year we've been pulling out. Obviously, he had an injury problem. But it's been 12 months in the making now and I think I need to make a, a big statement in this fight and I think Lee's the right payment, uh, person to do it again. So, yeah, just make sure you don't have no more injuries and just turn up on uh, December the 21st. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. Don't worry, son. You should get down on your knees and suck my balls so I'll just give you the biggest chance in boxing. Just apologies for... Sorry about that. <laughs> Let's try and keep it clean, please, fellas. Um, Isaac, let me, let me just ask you this. There was a comment from Lee McGregor, again on Twitter, where he, he talked about, if you want me to beat you up on your mate's undercard, I will gladly beat you up on that. That's, uh, I guess, what he has the opportunity to do, but you've got to make yeah. sure that doesn't happen. Yeah, if he beats me up, he beats me up. I'm going to try and beat him up. So the good thing is we're going to go on. The winner of this fight is the fans. Whoever knows boxing knows me, me and Lee's style. We're going to go there, and he's going to punch the shit out of me, and I'm going to punch the shit out of him, and obviously there's got to be a winner. The good thing is we're going to get paid for it. I'm going to go back home to our family safe and well. And that's the most important thing, but uh, there's only one winner, and there's only one outcome of this fight, and it, it goes however I want to go outbox him, stop him. So what's, depends what mood I'm in. Well, okay, apologies again for the language. Sorry, ladies Sorry. and gentlemen, anyone offended by a, a few stray words here and there. Lee McGregor, let me just get the final word from you on this, uh, on this fight. How's it going to go? What's going to happen? What's the plan December 21st? Well, do you know what? Isaac has, he has proved himself. He's proved that he is a good fighter. You know, he's fought. He's only lost at the top level twice. Um, both world champions, Nick Ball and uh, Lopez. So 
I do feel like I'm going to go in here and, and make a statement and win this and win this well and convincingly, however it may be. However it may be. Um, Just don't uh, take a backward step now when it comes to it. Don't it, back off. Stand it, down, fight. Well, the, the, this, this is the thing, Dave. I can win this fight any way I want. You know, people well, forget my amateur, game plan. my amateur background. I fought for GB. I've travelled the world. People in boxing know how good I really am. Um, sometimes I let my heart rule my head. Um, but on December the 21st, we'll get it right. We'll get the job done and we'll get it done in style. And, and I'll make a statement, like I say. Thank you, Lee McGregor. Thank you, Isaac Lowe, as well. I told you, this one is bubbling away. They've wanted to fight each other for about a year. December 21st, they will do just that. All right, let's move to the super bantamweight division. Uh, as Eddie Hearn put earlier, one of the best fights that can be made right now in the division, Dennis McCann and Peter McGrail. Now, Dennis McCann brings in his British, Commonwealth and European titles. And Peter McGrail, simply one of the best amateurs this country's ever seen. Uh, and he's his mandatory. Let's speak first to, uh, to Peter McGrail. Uh, Peter, I watched an interview with Dennis McCann the other day. He said, Peter, get ready because you know who the man is. So, Peter, give us your thoughts and who is the man? I'm the man, Dev. He knows I'm the man. His team knows I'm the man. Everyone, Wait, you know everyone in this room man. knows he's the man. And I'm going to show you so all December 21st who the boy is. So, yeah, that's it, Dev. This is, this is a fight that you've wanted for some time, right? Yeah, it is. Obviously, he's, he's got the belt, Sonny, on the domestic scene. And, you know, he's a big name. He's Queensbury's little golden boy. And, you know, that finishes on December the 21st. Well, let, let's bring in uh, Queensbury's little golden boy, as, as you put there, Peter. Uh, Dennis, this is, a, this is a, a great fight. Fantastic against a British opponent who, uh, who's very, very confident that he's going to do a number on you on December 21st. What are you, what are you thinking? 100%. Listen, the action speaks louder than words. We see what happened to me before. We got sleeped by Gerald Quinn, who, who in my eyes is a journeyman, really, to be honest with you. Lad, he's Let me finish. He's, I'm, I'm talking. One second. He's better than your best he's a, he's, a, he's a journeyman, to be honest with you. 17 and he's all, fought, lad. He's fought absolutely no one. Lad, your best win is amateur. An amateur. Uh, it was, you got okay, beat off Paluta and got gifted a draw. Amateur this. Amateur you got that, gifted a draw off Paluta. This is, this is professional boxing. This is professional boxing. 17 and boxing. all he was, lad. Shush, sure, I'm talking. Yeah, all the ussy, 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 us. And we get smacked straight in, straight in that chin. Oh, I'm he'll, 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 know, he'll know then. This is professional boxing. Yeah. You can't be ussy, ussy, and run around like a, like a chicken. Around and the you ring. can talk as much as you want, yeah. You're still going to get a beat down on December the 21st. Yeah, well, listen, you should thank me you're even here, to be honest with you, because God knows how you even got here. And to be honest, I can't even God take you seriously. You you've, you've beaten absolutely no one. You stepped Something up once. Don't me granddad for Krimbo. Oh, you've stepped up once. You got Idiot. sleeped. And you're going to get sleeped again December 21st. I'm going to knock you straight out. Right, son, will she, lad? You're 28 years of age. You're now 29 years of age now. Lad, who yes, now and never really. You're 24, who's 23. At the end of the day, lad, you're, we're going to fight December 21st. You're 28, 20 29 years of age, you know what I mean? Not so mumbling, lad. I can't even never. understand you. Relax. So, oh, all that tongue Italian, that shillage is making you very angry. Relax, brother. It's all good. I'm good, me, lad. I'm good. Don't worry. You're going to get your little weapons 20, December 21st. Sausage. Uh, to be honest, I think it's the fight of the card. I think it's definitely going to be a great fight. I don't Stoy think so, Dennis. Me and Lee, so I'm not having that. <laughs> Stoy Stoy is a great fight. And Stoy Liske, I think that his style, so poor, so poor, I think it's, it's, it's my favourite type of style to fight. I think it's, it's great. It's going to be a great fight. Um, it's going to be a very entertaining fight, but I think it only goes one way, and that's Peter McGrail yeah, looking you, up off the, off the canvas. You box no one like me, lad. I box no one like you. Give your head a wobble, brother, please. You've boxed please. no one like Give me. Give yourself a few slaps in the face and wake yourself up. You've boxed no one like Mom, me. Who have you beat? December the 21st. Who, brother? Who have you beat? Brad Foster never won a fight in four years. I'm going to beat you, December. Mark Leach was fresh out of the pub two weeks before the fight. Who have you beat? I'm going to beat you, December, lad. Okay, okay, okay fellas. Fight. You beat, lad, Paluta. Beat you got sleep. gifted a win. You got gifted a draw. <laughs> and then you knocked... Uh, Blue, 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 you survived the 12 rounds. You got gifted a draw and then you couldn't even get him out of there. Put me in with Paluta, lad. You wouldn't last a few rounds. That's you're fighting it. for my belt. Your belt. That's you can it. bring that. You can bring that back with you to Liverpool. Yeah. To be honest, it's not, for your belt, lad, and that belt is not with a flag to me. I wouldn't even wear that around my waist. You can keep that. To be honest with you, you I've the achieved 21st. more than you have. A 22-year-old uh, than you have in your whole career. Okay, okay. I'm just gonna come in there. Hey. Thank you, hey. Dennis and Peter. Between hey. you, you've covered all of my questions. So uh, we're, we're going to move things on, Frank. And you're missing an important thing. Yeah. Right? Go on. It's Queensbury v Matram again. Oh. So there's a lot of stakes. So you can't let us down. You can't let us down. Don't worry, man. I won't let you down. I didn't let you down before. Offense. This is what this is all about. Offense. You've got to win this one. This is a big, this is a big great fight. fight. Lot great. on the line, boys. Great fight. 
Brilliant fight. Super bantamweight division, British, Commonwealth and European titles on the line. Dennis and, McCann. And still. Peter McGraw, I'm sure. Dennis and McCann, the new. And still. And we've heard and the new. Let's, <laughs> let's move things on oh. to the heavyweights. To the heavyweight division. We've got a couple of absolutely brilliant fights here. Uh, two of the most popular British heavyweights of the last few years, Johnny Fisher and Dave Allen, will now clash. They've flirted about fighting for a little while. And now it's finally going to happen. And uh, I'm going to start with Dave Allen. Great to see you back, Dave. And uh, this is a fight that I understand you knew would happen one day. Yeah, first of all, just want to say how grateful I am to be on this show. Uh, many times over the last even 10 years, um, didn't think I'd be involved in big fights ever. So to, to be back in on a stage like this, I'm very grateful and thankful to everyone involved. Secondly, me and Johnny are on very good terms. There'll be no uh, back and forth with us. This will be a bit of a quieter one. But uh, yeah, I, I always knew it would happen um, the last few years. You know, I was the first pro he sparred. Um, and, and from that day, I knew that he'd do really well. We've kept in touch. And, um, you know, the last 12, 18 months, he started to improve, get some good wins. And the trajectory that he was on, um, and the trajectory that I've been on, I knew that we'd meet somewhere in the middle. So. Um, it's a fight I wouldn't have taken if I didn't think I could win. Um, it depends how good Johnny Fisher is, you know, like being completely honest, if he is really, really, really good, I'm probably in trouble. But if he's not, I'm, I'm just the guy to beat him. So um, I'm looking forward to it and uh, may the best man win. Well, let's bring in the Romford Bull, Johnny Fisher. Uh, great to see you. If you're really, 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 really good, Dave Allen's in trouble. So how good are you? Well, first of all, good afternoon, everyone. It's an honor and a privilege to be here. And um, these are the nights you dream of as a kid to be on shows like this. So I'm very thankful as well as Dave is. And I don't know if I'm really, 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 really good, but I'm all right and I can punch and I train hard and I'm fit and I'm strong. And I've got to be all them things to beat Dave Allen. I know what it's like sparring with Dave Allen. We sparred five years ago when I was 19, 20 years old. And he gave me a bit of a pace in, if I'm being honest, but. I knew that day when I walked out of that gym, I've got the minerals of what it takes to be a heavyweight boxer. And I've learned a lot in that time with Mark Tibbs, Jimmy Tibbs, Sonny Cannon in the gym. And now it's about showing and expressing them skills. And if I'm not on it, and if I don't show what I'm about, Dave Allen's the sort of bloke who can get into the fight. He can wing him in. He's clever, he's cute. And I've got to be 100% on it. The pressure's on me in this fight. I know that. Um, I've been, I say I've been more active, but Dave Allen's actually fought more rounds than me this year. I've fought a total of one round because I've had two first round knockouts. So it's up to me to get about and set about Dave. He might be my mate, but when we come to the 21st of December, I'm going to give it 110% and I'm sure he'll be doing the same. What are your advantages, Johnny? I'm fresher. I'm a 25 year old young man. I can punch and I've got a great corner. And boxing, you can have all them physical attributes, you can be fit and strong, but mentally in your head, that's the most important thing. And I think I'm made of strong stuff and I'm, I'm waiting for that day to prove it. And if Dave's up for it and if he's on it, I think you have to try and bring that out of me. So I'm prepared for any eventuality in this fight. That's my strength. Well, Dave Allen, uh, I understand this fight's been presented before, you might have mentioned it there, and you waited because you wanted to be ready. So what makes this version of Dave Allen ready, not just to come and give it a go and give us all a good show, but to actually beat Johnny Fisher, to upset Eddie Hearn? Yeah, this is my last chance, really. I've said that about eight times, but I think this actually might be the last one. Um, yeah, I'm stubborn, you know, that's what I am, really. Um, there's nothing really special about me um, at all. Uh, I'm not fast, uh, don't punch that hard, but I'm just stubborn, really. I've been around forever. Uh, I sparred everyone, I boxed everyone. I'm just stubborn, yeah. So like from round one to, to 10, I'm gonna be there. Um, so yeah, as I said before, like it, it, it really depends on how good he is. If he's the real deal, like I said, I'm in trouble. If he's not, I will beat him. I've proven that in the past. Um, and of course it is my last chance. Uh, I've been guilty in the past of probably not putting 100% in, but uh, I know this is the one, it, it's like when I boxed David Price. You know, I was the young kid coming through and uh, and you know, now I guess I'm, I'm in the last chance saloon. And, um, and realistically, really, this was the most winnable fight out of all of the fights I could have had. You know, he's, he is still a baby. Um, so yeah, I, I really do think the best version of myself wins this fight. Um, I've got to train hard and I've got to get a, a bed the right side that day. But, but if I do that, 
Um, I have no doubts at all that I win this fight. So, yeah, I, I really genuinely have no doubts at all. Um, I know how good I can be. Uh, I just hope that I've not, I've not missed the boat, really, in terms of taking it serious. But having two kids, it's really, really switched me on. So um, I'm really looking forward to it and uh, I want to give it my best. Thank you, Dave. Final one to you, Johnny. Uh, looking forward to a big Chinese in Riyadh? 100%. I hope uh, everyone's there. We're going to get some sweet and sour chicken balls in. We'll get some crispy aromatic duck. But aside from that, Dave is, is a mate, really. I'm, I'm on good terms with him. But when that bell goes, I'm going to give it 110%. And he's fighting, as you said, for his kids, for his family. I don't have any kids of myself, but I've got family at home and I'm fighting every time I get in that ring to give them a better life. So I've got just as much motivation as anyone else on this table. Brilliant stuff. Thank you, Johnny Fisher. Johnny Fisher and Dave Allen, brilliant fight, heavyweight fight coming up on the undercard. Well, the next one is truly a heavyweight fight. There's a man here sat next to Frank Warren, seen by many as the future of the heavyweight division in Moses Itauma. But he takes on Dempsey McKean, who is by far on paper the toughest test of his career and very much has his own ambitions to become a world champion. Let's begin with Dempsey McKean. Uh, Moses has been calling you out. He's been calling your name for a little while. Why do you think he's been doing that? Uh, look, he's probably in the position where he wants to step up, you know, and that's exactly what he wants to do. So I think he said he called out numerous people and, and tried to get a bite. And, um, you know, we've been dying for a fight for a long time. You know, I've been out of the ring since the Herkovich fight. It's been just over a year. We've been in the gym every day. We've been prepping for fights. Some fights have fallen through. So it's not like I'm coming off the couch. I'm in good stead. I'm in good shape. And, um, you know, he's got a world rank and I lost my world rankings after my recent loss. So uh, what better way to take out the number six in WBO and uh, take his position and climb my um, shot back up at another title. Well, the narrative around all of Moses' fights so far have been about, can this guy test him? Can he get rounds in? How's he going to look compared to this guy? But you are very much a heavyweight. Only one loss on your record in the final round against Hergovic. You've got your own ambitions. Tell us about them. Yeah, definitely. I, I see myself as a, still a contender. You know, another good win is going to chuck me straight back in the mix. And... Um, world rated uh, heavyweight in the top 10 and um, someone who's starting to get a bit of hype behind him as well. So what better way to test myself if I can't beat Moses then I'm not going to beat the top guys. So. And do you think the hype's real? Yeah, look, he's got a good skill set. He's young, he's immature, he's inexperienced. He's only 19, you know, so we're looking to capitalise on uh, a few of those things. So, But he, he's a good, fast southpaw. There's no doubt in my mind that he's, he's a good fighter. And like I said, he's got a good skill set. So, um, But we're going to come in with a good, good game plan. And uh, as long as we execute that, we're going to come away with our hand raised. Well, let's speak to Moses Itauma. Dempsey McKean is here, confident, ready to take you on on December 21st. You've been mentioning his name for a while. Why? To be fair, so I want to start off by saying thank you for everyone for coming out. And um, I would also like to say thank you to Dempsey McKean for obviously taking this fight. Like I have stated before, since my, since my fight with Marius Wack, I have literally called out everybody and anybody and, Mary, um, and Dempsey McKean happened to be one of, the, one of the guys that I called out. And obviously he's accepted the fight and I'm happy. I'm happy because this is the step up I wanted. This is the step up I need. And um, I feel like a KO win with Dempsey McKean could definitely put me up there. Do you think he can test you? Do you think this is the guy? 100%. How can he not? Like literally his only loss was to Filip Pelgovic, who was in the last round. So I believe that this is a good fight for me. And... Um, I'm just happy to get back in there. Like I haven't boxed for, for like a, so it seems like forever. And I just, I'm just want to get back in the ring, you know. And um, and against Dempsey McKean, I can really test myself, see how far I can go. He says you're inexperienced. I think he's he's probably right there. Although you've been boxing as an amateur for many years as well, but he's seen things he can capitalise on. What do, you, what do you think about that? Listen, we'll see when we get in there. Like, um, obviously, a lot of people do think that. And that's probably why people kind of take the fight against me. They're like, oh, he's inexperienced. He ain't done this, he ain't done that. I've been boxing this more than half my life. I'm not exactly like, do you know what I mean? So I feel like expect, expect something big, I guess. Dempsey, is this too much too soon for Moses Itauma? 
Yeah, look, they, they've been saying they wanted to step up, yeah? So what better opportunity than to uh, you know, have a step up and, and try and let's see what kind of medal he's got as well. So you've got to give your hat off to him. 19 years old, taking on a good contender. Like I said, only losses to Philip Hergish. And, um, you know, you've got to give, his, you know, give him his flowers where they're due. So, but I think it's probably too soon for him. I'm feeling confident coming in. Too big, too strong, uh, too much experience. And, um, yeah, it's going to be a good night. It's going to be a good fight regardless, you know. Like I said, he's a, he's a crafty southpaw. And um, I think it's going to be a great fight. I just wanted to say to them, so you're meant to feel like that. You are meant to feel like that. Listen, I don't want to fight you if you think that you're going to get in there and you're going to lose. I want you to have that attitude of, I'm going to go in course, there and I'm going to win. Of course, I'm not, I'm not here like uh, majority of the other opponents just happy to come in, collect yeah. a paycheck, you know. I'm uh, coming in with a full camp under my belt, good condition, uh, training specifically for you as well. Good, good. And that's, and that's only going to bring the best out of us and we can obviously display that for the fans. Listen, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to share Let's the get it on. I'm excited too. Um, thank you, Dempsey. Moses, just a final one to yourself. I can't ignore that you are sat next to Johnny Fisher. Both of you are seen really as the future of British heavyweight boxing and beyond. I saw you do an interview the other day saying, why would he fight a 19-year-old who could potentially end his career? Tell us more about that. And how does it feel to be sat next oh, to the wrong I kind of feel like he's not done this on purpose because he is Eddie's man. And he was like, you know, let, let's sit him next to, next to Moses at the time. But listen, I think Johnny Fisher's improved since he's, um, since he's turned pro. Listen, I don't hate the man. Obviously, I've sparred him before. I've obviously, me and Johnny have had a few conversations. Listen, I don't hate the man, but I feel like, listen, the fight will always be there on the table if you ever want it. And um, one day, we'll, um, we'll have it. Maybe a Chinese I, after or something. I agree. We, we didn't get that Chinese in when we went to Mentor a few years back. But listen, I will fight anyone. Anyone out there, I will fight. What I've got to realise is my value of what I bring to the table. But listen, I think I'm not a Man City. I'm not an AC Milan. I'm not a Liverpool. But I am a cold night away in Stoke. And to beat me, you've got to pull your socks up and put your shin pads on to beat me. <laughs> but listen, I, Moses Atalma, a great talent. I've got so much respect for him. And that is a massive fight for the British public down the line. And I think that can happen. Presumably you agree, Moses. Oh, Big fight. 100%. Honestly. I what are you ordering from the Chinese, though, if we go after? <laughs> What's your order? Oh, we'll see. We'll see when we get there. All right, lovely. Fantastic stuff. Thank you very much. Thank you to everyone at this top table. That concludes part one of today's two-part press conference. We're going to get some face-offs now down the front. Thank you.